hi i wanted to get on and give you some prophetic encouragement with something i feel the lord has been laying on my heart last night my family and i went out to eat at a fast food chain and as i looked around at the patrons and the people eating and my family eating i had this reminder of how the world Satan would love for us to stay in discontent and unthankfulness and worry and fear. How much of the world's economy is actually based on some of this? Think about it. If we are not content with, say for example, our looks, the beauty industry, they capitalize on that. Oh, you wish you looked like this. Cool. Buy our product. Or you wish you had a bigger house, but do you need one? Or you wish you had a newer car, but do you need one? It's, God was just reminding me of this and he wanted me to share this with you to highlight it. Because I think it can be easy to fall into these things slowly. Kind of warming the pot slowly until you realize, oh my gosh, I'm in the middle of this storm. It can feel like a storm of... I hate everything around me. I don't like anything. I don't like myself. I don't like anybody else. I need all these things. I'm amazing. Someone come and serve me. Which that is not God's heart for us. That is not who we were created to be. We are created in the image of God. And we carry his likeness. And he is the biggest, most loving servant of all. How do we show his love? by serving and by giving. So he just wanted to give this reminder to all of us. When we're in discontent and unthankfulness and worry and fear, it's kind of like a prison and it can be pretty tormenting and it's not fun, <laughs> to say the least, to be in that. And God wants us free. Jesus wants us free. He died on the cross to set us free. He loves us that much. So I just want to read a few scriptures and um, I just pray you're encouraged and we'll see what God wants to bring out of this. So the first one I'm going to read is Hebrews 13 verses 5 and 6. And this one is regarding being content. So here we go. Starting in verse 5, your life should be free from the love of money. Be satisfied or content with what you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Therefore, we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? There's a lot of stuff in those two verses. If we keep our eyes on the Lord, let your life be free from the love of money. That is in and of itself is a big trap. Greed. Um, we put Jesus first. Everything else falls into place. He's never going to leave us ever. And then he's our helper. We're not in this world alone to do this by ourselves. He loves us. We're his children. He wants us in his family. Remember, he chose all of us from the foundation of the world. He would love for all of us to choose him back through accepting that gift of salvation that Jesus, his son, died to bring us. The sad truth is not everybody chooses him back, but I pray that you will. That you will. So, I'm just going to take a little break right here. Holy Spirit's telling you to do this. If you want to choose Jesus and you want that right now, just pray this prayer with me. There's no special words. It's a cry of your heart and believing in your heart that he died on the cross to save you, to forgive your sins, and then speaking out with your mouth. So just say, dear Jesus, I need you. I see I've messed up beyond belief, beyond all repair, and I can't do anything to fix it. And I I want to be in right standing with you. I want to be back in relationship with you. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross to forgive me of all my sins, of all the muck and yuck that's ever happened and will happen and is happening. 
I receive your forgiveness right now. Please come in and take over my life. Be in charge. Be the Lord of my life. I receive you. And I declare you are Lord over my life. I love you, Jesus. Thank you so much for loving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you're saved. <laughs> Plain and simple. Jesus now lives inside of you. Isn't that beautiful and amazing? And you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit as a down payment of what is to come. Side note. I'm um, actually, no. Um, welcome to the family. All of heaven is rejoicing right now. Throwing a party. It's going to be great. Father God has your back. He has every single piece of provision that you need and every single piece of freedom that you crave. Jesus bought with his blood. So let's keep going. So we just addressed discontent. Let's be thankful. Let's be content with what we have. And it's not going to be easy. Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart for I have overcome the world. How do we overcome? Through the blood of the lamb and the power of his testimony. Blood of Jesus. Jesus didn't say once you become a Christian, it's going to be free and easy. But we can overcome. We can triumph through all things. And he has promised to turn all things for our good. That's Romans 8. 38 to 39. So let us talk about thankfulness. Um, Psalm 100. Shout triumphantly to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his, his people, the sheep of his pasture. Get this. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name for the Lord is good. His love is eternal and his faithfulness endures through all generations. In verse 4, it says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. If you want to enter the presence of the Lord, start out by saying thank you. Enter the gates. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. It will also rewire your brain in a wonderfully positive way. It's scientifically backed, actually. Turn, I wish I had, I, I hate this or whatever. Try and find one thing you can be thankful for. Thank you that I have a place to sleep. Thank you that I have covers. Thank you that I've got... I don't know, hair on my head. Thank you that I have eyes that can see. Thank you for the food on my plate. Thank you for the mess that is in my house because that means I am blessed with children. It flips it for the positive and it's powerful, powerful. That'll break off a lot of nasty in your life. <coughs> okay, worry. Jesus wants us to live free from worry. So I'm going to read another chunk of scripture. And you know what? The word of God is living and active. And it accomplishes everything that he has for it to do. His word does not go forth from his mouth and return void. But it accomplishes everything that he has for it to do. And I believe that is Isaiah 55. But let me just double check. Do do do. Yep. Isaiah 55, 11. That's a promise. So reading this out loud, our words have power. This is powerful. This is releasing. There is power in the word of God. It's important to get into it, to be saturated in it, to meditate on it, and to speak it out over ourselves, our families, our countries, our world, wherever the Holy Spirit leads you to do it. All right, Matthew 6, 25. This is why I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the sky. They don't sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth more than they? Can any of you add a single cubit to his height? 
by worrying. No, and side note, one of the biggest killers is stress. And worry definitely causes stress. Jesus doesn't want us to live in worry. It's deadly. <laughs> and why do you worry about clothes? Learn how the wildflowers of the field grow. They don't labor or spin thread. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was adorned like one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and thrown in the furnace tomorrow, won't he do much more for you, you of little faith? So don't worry saying, what will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? For the idolaters eagerly seek all these things. And your heavenly father knows, he knows that you need them. And, but seek, here's the key, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these things will be provided for you. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. That's some wisdom right there straight from the mouth of Jesus. When Jesus is Lord of our lives, everything is lined up and is in correct priority. Everything else that we need follows. It just comes. If we seek him, what is his kingdom? Righteousness, peace and joy and the Holy Spirit. And it says righteousness twice. So that must be pretty important. When you get Jesus in your heart, you are washed in his blood. You look like Jesus. You are the righteousness of Christ Jesus. You are righteous. You are in right standing with God. And everything as Jesus is in this world, so are you. When you have Jesus in your heart, that's your reality. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. When you have Jesus in your heart, you are, your spirit and Jesus are intermingled as one. We are seated in heavenly places in Jesus. We have access to everything that we need and want. If it's not good for us, God's not going to give it to us. So you don't need to worry about that. But get his heart. Get what he dreams about. I saw it, it'll all happen because that's, that's what he does. Okay. Lastly, fear. I'm going to read one more chunk of scripture and it is going to be another chunk, but we need to, you need to hear it. And I love, love this Psalm. You can pray this over yourself, over your family, multiple times a day, every day in the morning, whenever this is real. This is real. Psalm 91. The one who lives under the protection of the Most High dwells in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Who are we supposed to trust in? God, he's the only one who will not let us down. He himself will deliver you from the hunter's net, from the destructive plague. These are promises you can take to the bank and cash in. This is real. He will cover you with his feathers. You will take refuge under his wings. His faithfulness will be a protective shield. You will not fear the terror of the night, the arrow that flies by day, the attack, the plague that stalks in darkness, or the pestilence that ravages at noon. Though a thousand fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, the pestilence will not reach you. It will not reach you. You will only see it with your eyes and witness the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord my refuge, the most high your dwelling place. No harm will come to you. No plague will come near your tent. Put this in terms of today. No sickness will come near your house. For he will give his angels orders concerning you to protect you in all your ways. All means all. 
They will support you with your hands, with their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the young lion and the serpent. And that is in reference to demonic powers. He's more powerful. Because he is lovingly devoted to me, I will deliver him. I will exalt him. Because he knows my name, when he calls out to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and give him honor and satisfy him with a long life and show him my salvation. Read that as many times as you need to. Memorize it. So it's, it's right there. This is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That thing cuts through anything. And those promises are armor and protection, the faithfulness of God. So I pray you're encouraged. I pray you're reminded and that you're encouraged and that you have tools in your hands of what to do. And you have the richness of the word of God to guide you and to fill you up when you need to be fed. So fill up even more, more than ever on the word. It's necessary. He loves you so much. He cares about every single area of your life and he wants to be in charge because he loves you even more than you love yourself. He knows everything that is good for you that is not good for you. His plans for you are good to give you a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11, you can trust him. He is not man that he should lie. There's no shadow of turning in him. Those are all scriptures. I don't have the references with me right now, but you can look them up. I pray you are blessed and encouraged. It's going to be a great day. I'll talk to you soon.